Mr. President, the COVID-19 pandemic has illustrated the oneness of humanity. In our interconnected world, no one is safe unless everyone is safe. Locking down to control the pandemic has triggered the worst recession since the Great Recession of the last century. This has hit the poorest countries the hardest, as well as the poor in all the countries. In Pakistan, we realized very early on that if we imposed a strict lockdown, the type that several affluent countries had imposed, we would have more people dying of hunger than the virus. Therefore, we adopted a policy of smart lockdown. While concentrating on the hotspots, the virus hotspots, we opened up our agriculture sector immediately and then followed it up by the construction sector, which, which employed most of the people. At the same time, and this is despite financial constraints, my government deployed $8 billion, unprecedented amount for our health services, plus support the poorest and most vulnerable households with direct cash payments through SAS program, and then subsidies to the small businesses. Even though our smart lockdown was heavily criticized in the beginning, but thanks to the almighty Allah's grace, we have not only managed to control the virus, stabilize our economy, but most importantly, we have been able to protect the poorest segment of the society from the worst fallout of the lockdown. Today, Pakistan's response is cited among the success stories in controlling and responding to the pandemic. However, we are still not out of the woods, like no country is out of the woods today. But Mr. President, it was obvious from the outset that developing countries would need fiscal space to respond to and recover from the COVID crisis. Debt relief is one of the best ways to create that fiscal space for developing countries. Therefore, in early April, I called for a global initiative on debt relief. We appreciate the G20's official debt suspension initiative and the emergency and rapid financing offered by the IMF, World Bank, Asian Development Bank, and UN agencies. This, however, is not going to be enough. The IMF has estimated that developing countries will need over $2.5 trillion to respond and recover from the crisis. The official debt suspension will need to be extended and expanded. Additional debt relief measures will also be needed. Development banks should ensure adequate financial inflows. Rich countries have generated over $10 trillion to finance their own response and recovery. They should support the creation of at least $500 billion in new special drawing rights for the developing world. 